Thank you, Madam President. Um, I cannot but just begin again by thanking uh, the Polish delegation for hosting us here. Uh, in Latin we say repetita juvent. I said it before in the main hall, but I think uh, this is the moment when you address the standing committee. I really would like to express again uh, ex expressions of gratitude to Barbara for the efforts uh, made by you, by the colleagues of the Polish Parliament. It's very nice that you're hosting us here. Thank you very much. Um, Continuing in Latin, Madam President, mala tempora currunt, uh, it's uh, hard times, we say in Latin. Uh, but I will surprise you. Uh, today I will also uh, deliver a, a very positive report, uh, in my view. Uh, there are uh, many positive aspects that I would like to bring your attention on. Uh, as I said before, uh, I'm Secretary General, I'm in charge of the staff of this organization. I have to ensure that uh, the uh, Secretariat has uh, uh, proper resources in order to service uh, the members of Parliament. And uh, you have seen our staff in action in the recent elections, the modern tools that we've put together. You've seen them acting here. You've seen the conference team led by Gustavo and uh, with the help of Odil and others, how they've come up with this conference in a short time, working together with the Polish colleagues. I would like to underscore, as it is the moment when we also talk about administrative issues like the budget, uh, the importance of the staff of the International Secretariat. And I'm responsible for that mainly. So the delivery that you get uh, from uh, dedicated professionals professionals, but also people who are very friendly, very easy to access to, is something that I will uh, not get tired of underscoring. So thank you very much to the uh, Secretariat staff. Uh, on the budget, uh, um, the Treasurer, dear Peter, thank you very much for um, what you're doing uh, to also uh, look at our resources, uh, trying to also mainstream uh, the message that uh, we need adequate resources in order to remain a professional Secretariat, because we have many professionals who are also looking to other the international organizations and we are not that competitive with other international organizations so at some point in time we'll also have to look into the remuneration package of our staff and try to also adequate these to other international organizations but the good news about the budget is that we were on budget this year that uh, our independent audit was actually also a Danish uh, company that uh, so can speak to uh, Peter in Danish, uh, will for sure make a positive report about uh, uh, our budget. We stayed within budget, so I'm very proud of that. Um, also, as a Secretary General, I'm in charge of organizing events, uh, you know, uh, in finding uh, places where we can have our activities. And on this, I must say, the, if you read my report, my written report, which was circulated, there is a list of activities just from July, the last time I reported to today, which is impressive. How many members have engaged, have gone out, and all of these activities are also uh, staffed, supported by the Secretariat. Uh, so. Um, Another aspect uh, that is very positive and I would like to underscore is the fact that uh, one of the responsibilities we have at the Secretariat is to find venues for our future meetings. Uh, and I can say uh, that up to the year 2025, uh, we've already secured the venues for annual sessions and for the autumn meeting. And here I would like to, in particular, thank Canada and Uzbekistan, who will host us uh, next year, I don't see Uzbekistan, uh, Romanian Ireland in 2024, um, another country which I will not name because it's still in the process of deciding the 2025 uh, annual session, but uh, soon we will have a positive response on that, and San Marino for the autumn meeting of 2025. So until 2025, uh, we are secure that uh, our uh, venues for um, um, our statutory meetings uh, are in place, and please, uh, if you feel like uh, you would like to take on this responsibility from 2026 onwards, uh, we are, of course, uh, happy and welcome you coming forth. I know that it's a very long time perspective because legislatures normally last four or five years, so maybe it's not a decision that you can make, uh, make right now, but uh, look into the possibility of also hosting some of our events. Um, we have had uh, recently two uh, very successful election observation missions in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina and in the U.S. These were the biggest election observation mission ever in terms of me me members' participation. And also here, I think we have provided uh, um, in technological tools for our members. Those who were in the U.S. who could see polling stations on their mobile phone, which are pretty much unique, let's say, in other international organizations in terms of support to members. Um, um, Madam President, a word to you. Uh, thank you very much for your leadership in this moment. Uh, it's uh, been a very difficult time to be president of this assembly. You have been a strong leader. You have uh, demonstrated strong leadership. Um, you have uh, um, managed to steer this assembly in uh, 
moments where it's not easy to keep balance between all the kind of pressures that you've been uh, subject to. The International Secretariat is here at your service to support you. Uh, some of my colleagues are saying that uh, I'm being too nice. Uh, we should test your diabetes uh, <laughs> at the end of the year, too much sugar. But uh, I think uh, we will uh, continue to support you uh, until uh, the end of your um, um, leadership uh, in, uh, in July uh, next year. And uh, especially in this very hard moment, you need uh, the full support of the Secretariat, but also of the entire Standing Committee. Um, as I said, we, have do, we are meeting in a moment uh, of uh, big difficulties. Uh, this is a moment where the existential, um, there is an existential threat to this organization as such, the OSC. Uh, if I look at the Decalogue of the Helsinki Final Act, uh, the Declaration of Principles, uh, sovereignty, equality, respect for rights, inherent sovereignty, refraining from the threat of use of force, inviolability of frontiers, territorial integrity of states, peaceful settlements of disputes, non-intervention in internal affairs, respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, equal rights and self-determination of people, cooperation among states, fulfillment in good faith of obligations under international law. Most of these principles have been totally disrespected by uh, the Russian Federation in this case. And this is something that we have uh, declared in 2014, in 2022, in our uh, annual declarations. I think we should be proud of the track record we have in terms of our position to Ukraine. Um, I have, in my institutional capacity, also the responsibility to ensure that the rules of this organization are respected. And uh, that leads me also to the um, debate that we will have uh, after this intervention. Um, of course, the International Secretariat has to advise the President on the respect of the rules uh, of this organization. And uh, I think, at the outset, the rules of this organization, of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly, are a little bit obsolete. I welcome your initiative, uh, Madam President, uh, for this informal bureau meeting that we will have tomorrow, uh, which is informed by your vision paper, to really reflect uh, in a more relaxed uh, moment uh, among leaders, elected leaders of the bureau, on the way forward for this assembly, what we should be, what kind of rules we should give ourselves. I think. Uh, Tomorrow's Bureau is very important because it will trigger a process of reform of our rules, which can give us also the legal tools to be able to do our work in a bit of a more um, organized fashion. Um, I would like to also express appreciation to uh, the parliaments of uh, Denmark for hosting our secretariat in Copenhagen, the government of Austria for hosting our Vienna office, and the governments of Germany and Italy for seconding staff to the international secretariat. Um, we have a busy year ahead. In 2023, uh, it will be a year also because uh, there will be many events, one happening in Vancouver, long distance, one happening in Uzbekistan. Uh, in May, I think uh, uh, the uh, Zeri delegation together with us wants to organize one of the Helsinki Plus 50 events in Baku. Um, there is uh, um, meetings, of course, in Vienna in February, our uh, Copenhagen Bureau meeting. So it will be a year also of long uh, distance travel, plus most likely elections in uh, Turkey and in Kazakhstan, which I imagine we will observe. So uh, we will have a busy year ahead, and I think that uh, with the resources we have, the staff we have, and with your leadership, Madam President, we will be going through a successful year. Thank you.